primers for PCR. Primers are single-stranded 18 to 30 base pair long DNA fragments. They are also called as oligonucleotides because they are single-stranded. These single-stranded DNA, which are also called as primers, they are complementary to the flanking sequences to that region that have to amplify. If a particular region have to amplify, the primers are designed and synthesized from the flanking or we can say that from the outer regions of that amplified product. Where we want to amplify the DNA, we have to design one left primer and one right primer to amplify the central region. Here we can see that how primers are designed and synthesized. This is the double standard DNA. We can see that this is double standard stand 1 and this is stand 2. So this is left primer. This is left primer and this is a right primer. So two primers have been designed. This primer is complementary to this sequence of the template and this the sequence of this primer is complementary to the sequence of the template from this stand. So DNA is double standard and there are two primers left primer and right primer. So left primer is complementary to one stand while the right primer is complementary to the other stand of the DNA. This is another diagram where we can see that how uh, primers they bind to the single standard DNA. Here we can see that this is double standard DNA. One, is in, one stand is in red color and the second stand of the DNA is shown in black color. So during the denaturation, that is the first step of the PCR, the both stands they separate from each other. So these are two stands, they are separated from each other. Now the primers, they will bind to the complementary sequence of each of the stand. Here we can see that this is primer 1 and this is primer 2. Primer 1 is in green color and primer 2 is in black color. So these primer, they will bind to the complementary sequence of the template DNA. So here they will bind and once the primer will bind to the complementary sequence, this process of PCR is called as annealing. And the third step is called as extension or elongation. Once the primer will bind to the complementary sequence, DNA polymerase will extend the stand. So here in blue color, the new stand that is complementary to the template stand has been formed. And here we can see that the second in brown color that has been formed. So initially DNA is in double standard. As a result of denaturation, double standard is converted into single standard. Then there is annealing means the primer will bind to the complementary sequence on each of the single standard DNA. Once primer will bind, then the third step is called as elongation. DNA polymerase will extend and will prepare the new strands. So primers can be specific and primers can be random. In case if we want to amplify a particular region from the DNA or we want to amplify a particular gene of interest, then we have to design specific primers. But in case if we want to study different regions from the DNA, primers can be, uh, uh, can be formed as random. So primers, we can say that primers can be specific and primers can be random. If we see 
some of the main features of the primers the types of the if we consider the types of the primers they can be specific they can be random and and the length of the primer usually while designing the primers it is kept in view or it is kept in mind that their length should be 18 base pair to 30 base pair because the uh, if the length of the primer is between 18 to 30 their binding to the template stand will be more efficient and uh, annealing temperature because there are two primers one is left primer and the second one is a right primer uh, the difference between the annealing temperature of both primers should be less the next property of the primers should be specificity because primers they have to bind that particular region on the dna they should be specific their sequence should be specific so that they will not bind to any other region on the dna or on the genome and while designing the primers their nucleotide composition should be considered there should not be all the a and t adenine and thymine and there should not be all the c and g so their composition uh, should be uh, uh, neither more in case of a and t nor they should be more c and g these are some of the properties of while designing the primers following features should be considered number 1 there should be avoid of interstand homologies because while designing the primer the there should be a repetition of the sequence so there should be minimum homologies within the single primer on the other hand it should also be avoided interstand homologies because there are two primers one is left primer and the other one is right primer so that these two primers they will not join with each other because if they will join with each other to form the double strand there should be less primer available for the pcr reaction the third point should be considered the melting temperature of the forward primer should almost be equal to the melting temperature of the reverse primer gc contents should be between 20 to 80% product size by using the primers can be between 100 base pair to 700 base pair although in long pcr up to 10 kb dna can be amplified by using the primers but the optimum product size can be between 100 to 700 base pair the primers they should be target specific means the from which region the primer have been designed they should target to the same dna sequence formula for calculating the melting temperature of the primers is 4 into g plus c plus 2 into a plus t so this is the formula by which we can calculate the melting temperature of the primers first for the left primer then for the right primer and ultimately we can get the mean melting temperature of the primers